This tutorial has been made possible thanks to your monthly support on Patreon. Hey everyone, Howard Pinsky here with another Photoshop tutorial. If you caught my recent vlogs, you're probably aware that I'm now living in Los Angeles, where we just got a ton of rain. Well, for most parts of the country, it would just be considered a little bit of rain, but California definitely needs it. To go along with the theme of lovely weather, let me show you a pretty simple way of adding raindrops to your images to make it seem as though you're looking out a wet window. The girl in this photo looks like she's thoroughly enjoying being out in the rain, so we'll keep her out there, while we keep ourselves dry behind a window. Let's start by creating a brush that will allow us to paint in the raindrops. Grab your brush tool, shortcut key B, and then choose a standard hard brush from the brush picker, with the size set to around 70 pixels. Now, depending on the size of your image, the brush may need to be adjusted to get the perfect raindrop size. Next, in order to customize the brush, let's open up the brush panel, which can be found under the window menu. In the brush tip shape section, the only option you'll need to change is the spacing. To ensure that the raindrops are not all clumped together, increase the spacing to 1000%. Next, hop into Shape Dynamics and set the size jitter to around 75%. This will randomize the size of the raindrops as you're painting, so that the drops are not all the same size. All the other options can remain at 0%. Finally, turn on Scattering to allow the raindrops to scatter across the document when you're painting them in. Make sure that both axes is turned on, and set the scatter value to 1000%. If you'd like more drops as you're painting, you can turn up the count just a touch. Perfect, the brush is now ready to go. Make sure to create a new layer so that you're not painting directly on the background image. As you start brushing on your document, you're going to notice that the raindrops are scattering really nicely around the image. Keep brushing until you're happy with the amount of rain that will be present on the window. I'm going to fill the image with a nice amount of drops. Now you may be noticing, as the raindrops are being added, that they're all very round. Of course, this isn't how they would look in real life. To randomize the drops even more, let's add a few filters. But before doing so, you'll want to convert the layer into a smart object first. This will allow you to edit those filters even after they've been added. The first filter to be added will be a wave distortion, located under the filter distort menu. For the values, the number of generators will be set to 2, the wavelengths to 10 and 200, and the amplitudes to 5 and 30. Everything else can pretty much stay as is. When the wave filter is applied, the once perfectly round raindrops will start to appear, well, not so round. Finally, to rough up the edges just a touch, a ripple filter can be added, again under the filter distort menu. For these settings, the amount will be set to negative 55, and the size set to large. Perfect, so now that the shape of the raindrops is looking a little bit better, it's time to give it an updated look, which will be done using layer styles. Double click on the raindrop layer to open up your layer styles, and the first setting you'll want to change is the fill. To allow the styles to be seen, and to allow the raindrops to be transparent, set the fill to 0%. Make sure you don't adjust the opacity, as that will affect the layer styles as well. Now, the first style that's going to be added will be a bevel and emboss, to give our raindrops the depth that they need to start looking like raindrops. Start by increasing the depth to 200%, and the size to around 25 pixels. If you're working with larger or smaller raindrops, these values may need a little bit of tweaking. Next, down below under Shading, turn off Use Global Light, and then set the angle and altitude both to 60. Of course, if you want the light to be coming from a different direction, you can easily adjust the angle accordingly. Now, to give the raindrops a little bit of shine, set the gloss contour to Cone Inverted, and then set the Highlight Mode's opacity to 100%, and then change the Shadow Mode to Soft Light, with an opacity of 100% as well. The raindrops should now have a little bit of depth, but they're still a little bit too dark. Let's go ahead and add an inner shadow, which will actually act as a highlight. Start by switching the blend mode to soft light, with the color set to a pure white, and then the opacity set to 100%. Next, turn off global light, and then set the angle at negative 120 degrees, set the distance to 20, and the size to 25. 
Finally, down below, set the contour of the shadow to cone. That's starting to look a little bit better. To finish off the layer styles, a drop shadow can be added to give the drops a little bit more depth. Set the blend mode to soft light, the color to black, and the opacity to 100%. Next, turn off global light, set the angle at 60 degrees, the distance to 2, and the size to 6. Perfect, and that will do it for the layer styles, but the overall image still doesn't look complete. If you were to be focusing on raindrops on a window, the background would certainly be blurred out. Let's make that happen. Select your background image from the layers panel, and before you do anything, convert that layer into a smart object. Again, this will allow you to edit any filters that you may add along the way. As we're looking to blur out the background, a Gaussian blur found under the filter Blur menu is the best bet. The amount of blur is up to you, but for this example, 25 pixels should work well. Right away that brings the focus to the raindrops in the foreground, but there's still more that we can do. With the background image still active, go ahead and duplicate it. This can be quickly done with the command or control J shortcut, and you'll see why this layer is duplicated in a moment. On this new layer, we're going to be adding a slight frosted texture to the non-existent window. Within the filter gallery, there's a really nice glass distortion, which will work well. Head up to the filter menu, and then open up the filter gallery. Once launched, expand the distort category, and then choose glass. For the settings, set the distortion at 15, the smoothness at 2, the texture to frosted, and the scaling could be kept around 100%. Of course, you can tweak these settings to your liking if you need to. Once the filter is applied, your window will now have a nice frosted look to it. So why was this filter applied to a duplicated layer, you may be asking? Well, having the frosted texture on a separate layer will allow you to mask out portions of it to make it look like the moisture was rubbed away. Now, instead of using a layer mask for the filters, you'll want to apply one to the overall layer. Press the layer mask button at the bottom of your layers panel. Now, grab your brush tool and find a nice rough brush, like the round bristle brush. Then with the foreground color set to black, paint in the areas that you want to hide. Now at first, you may not be able to see the difference, but this can be corrected by adding an adjustment layer right above the previous layer. As an example, you can add an exposure adjustment layer, and then increase the gamma slider, which will create a really nice contrast between the two layers, leaving you with the final result. And that will just about do it. If you want to give your images a rainy look, you now know how it can be done. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to receive future content, and if you want to support my work, head over to patreon.com slash Howard Pinsky to set up a small monthly contribution. Take care.